So yeah, guys, this is your reminder that you probably don't want and you probably don't want to do right now, but it's time to check your tiller. And that is the sound of snow and sleet. Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. It is a nasty one here in Arkansas. We've had freezing rain for the last couple days. We're gonna have it again tomorrow. But lucky for me, what does that mean? Southern Arkansas is not good about cold weather. I know a lot of you Northerners, you're like, no, we still gotta keep working. We still gotta keep doing things in Arkansas. We don't do that here. We uh, pretty much shut everything down. The schools close, <laughs> even though the roads are probably fine. But we uh, shut the schools down. We shut the business down. We're not going to sit up at the shop when it's 29 degrees outside twiddling our thumbs because nobody comes in. So that's a good time for us to take a day off and uh, see what's going on. So this is your reminder, guys. I know you don't want to, but it is time to check your tiller and your other lawn equipment also, but definitely your tiller right now if you're a gardener, because if you wait until you need your tiller and it has been sitting in your shed since last year with the same gas in it, about 80% of the time, it's not gonna run and you're gonna end up taking it to the shop. And I'm telling you this, right now the shops are sitting there, they don't have anything coming in. Now's a good time to get it fixed so you know that it's gonna be running for spring. But if you wait until the beginning of March, we go from having nothing in the shop and twiddling our thumbs to a week later being three weeks out on repairs for riders. That's how many we get in. All uh, They all come in at the same time at the beginning of spring, it's crazy. And then we pretty much stay three weeks out on riders riders for about six months and then on two cycles I'll go from fixing it the day that you bring it in to sometimes being up to a week out so it might be you know a week before you get your blower trimmer chainsaw back so now's a great time to take it in or if you have this tiller that I've got today we're going to go over a Tecumseh tiller I know why do I have a Tecumseh it was free and <laughs> a lot of you have these Tecumseh tillers because um, it was one of the, you know, top tillers sold in the, you know, early 2000s. A lot of the generators had the uh, Tecumseh engines on them also. So if you do, it, it's pretty much the same premise when it comes to looking inside the carburetor and getting it cleaned out and stuff like that. So Tecumseh's are known to leak though. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, when they come into our shop and they are 20 years old because Tecumseh has been out of business for a very long time, a lot of times we just throw another carburetor on it instead of trying to fix it. Now, a lot of them are very, very very fixable but when you see as many as we do getting over 2,000 pieces of equipment in every year and we see a lot of Tecumseh's come in and 50% of them on those 20 year old carburetors just leak they just leak I don't know what it is you put a kit in it you, have a, you put a new jet everything's good you clean it out real good put it back together it doesn't leak immediately but you go set it outside and you call the customer and you tell them, yeah, your tiller's ready or your generator's ready or whatever the Tecumseh engine's on. <laughs> and if it sits there for a day or two, when the customer comes to pick it up, it's leaked. It's leaked gas out the air filter, destroyed the air filter. And, uh, and that, um, uh, just gets really tiring. So we don't even <laughs> really go into them that much anymore unless they're pretty much, you know, spotless. We'll, we'll still do it. But if it's got any kind of gook in there or you can see any kind of rust or, or uh, pitting, nope, we just change carburetor. So knowing that I'm gonna be busy in four weeks, that I'm gonna go from doing nothing to being slammed in four weeks, I gotta get my stuff going because on top of running the business and working there full time and having children and having a house I gotta take care of and doing the YouTube channel, I also have a 40 by 50 square foot garden of raised beds and in-ground gardening that I do every single year that goes from looking like this to this every spring. <laughs> so it's a lot of work. And even though the spot that I do in-ground garden in is sort of small, it's probably only about 10 feet by 40 feet. I use my Tecumseh tiller on that. And I, like everyone else, I abuse it. I use it. I set it up in my shop. I think I'm going to get around to servicing and, you know, taking care of it and get all the gas out. No guys, I'm, I'm just as bad as some of y'all sometimes. I, I just don't get back around to it.
So I have full confidence that it's not going to run. <laughs> it probably has water in it. It probably uh, needs a carburetor kit. I don't know yet. We're going to check it out. Now, although I'm working on a Tecumseh today, if you have a 20 year old, 15 year old tiller and it has a Briggs on it, the principles are pretty much the same. So still follow along. So I uh, pulled it out the other day whenever we were stacking some wood under the lean to, but it has been getting frozen obviously the whole thing <laughs> oh i should have brought it in I, i've left it out here for three days and it has icicles on it i'm terrible oh, let's get this into the garage So I've got it in the garage now, and I guess I just need to let it <laughs> thaw out for a while. My garage is heated, so hopefully I can come back in about an hour maybe, and uh, this thing will be uh, not so icy. Okay, so I've been letting this thing sit for hours. Like I said, it's my day off. I've been Netflixing and chilling for uh, all day, pretty much. <laughs> so I put a fan on it, dried everything up. It's completely thawed out now. And the more I got to thinking about it, I didn't even use this last year. Last year I used my little two cycle Mantis tiller and the year before that is when I used this. And I think I only used it, like I said, it's a small section. So I probably used it for about 20 minutes. And I believe I had to run it on half choke the whole time. And that was from me just bringing it from the shop. And the reason I got it for free, I think is because the customer didn't want to put the money into it to fix it and just gave it to us. So it was one that we had fixed and I had didn't need it at the time. So it sat around at the shop for a long time until I thought, you know, I do want to go ahead and keep it. So it sat for probably a year fixed, but still that's not good if the machine's sitting and not running, especially on these Tecumseh's. You want to keep them started at least every few months just to make sure your uh, needle seat still is pliable, that your O-ring still pliable, all that kind of stuff, because these are really, decent engines it's just carburation issues with these most of the time so i know that it has potential to run again perfectly but it is definitely going to probably need a carbureted cleaning i did take a peek in the gas tank and i don't even know what's in there let me show you so uh yeah it's not going to want to focus real well down on that stuff but oh there we go that looks like straight up dirt <laughs> I don't even know how that got in there. And that's probably, you know, was in there the last time that I used it and had to run it on half choke. No wonder why. So we got to take this gas, ta gas tank off and uh, clean it out. I'm going to go ahead and remove this air filter cover. And it's so funny on my video that I did with a snowblower and I found out they don't have air filters. Everybody got on to me and they're like, no, we don't need air filters when it comes to the snow. And I'm like, wait a minute. In Arkansas, and I told y'all that was my first time working on one. In Arkansas, we have dust. I don't care if it snows or not. We, it is a dirty, nasty area with all the trees that we have. So obviously, yeah, we uh, used it one time since uh, we fixed it last time. So let's start taking this base off. Now from looking at the product label, it seems that this might be a 2006 model, which I thought that that was about the time that Tecumseh went out of business. I'd have to look that up again, but if you know, go ahead and leave it in the comments below because I forgot the exact year that they went out. I know that we had a ice storm here in 2000 or 2001 and everybody in Arkansas went to the big box stores and bought generators and they were all Tecumseh engines on them. Like <laughs> it seemed like every single one we saw in the store 10 years later had been sitting for 10 years and it had a Tecumseh on it. So, all right, we're to the carburetor. Probably going to need a primer bulb. I don't know. Maybe not, but I'm going to have to get that thing off. But first I want to go ahead and remove the gas tank. That way we know we don't make a mess. So the first thing I want to do is remove the fuel line going to the carburetor because I got to drain whatever's left in this tank. There we go. Oh, that's 
That's gross. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty disgusting. Now we get on the front side of the tiller and there is two bolts right under here, one right there, one right there, and we're going to remove those two bolts that hold this bracket onto the engine. I'm going to take the hose clamp off and be very careful because these old tanks, you will just plumb shear the entire nipple off. So you want to be careful when you're taking these fuel lines off. So if you go to just pulling up on it, you're going to get stuck and you're not going to know how to take it out. And you're going to think that you're going to have to squish this little plastic prong on the gas tank together somehow to get it up. But actually, it's super simple. You just pull it forward and it comes out of its slot. So... <laughs> We got the gas tank off. So now once you get to this point, you're like, okay, cool. I got a couple more bolts. I can take the carburetor off, but how do I get to them? They're like way tucked back there unless you got some cool articulating 90 degree uh, tool, which I don't have right now. Um, you're gonna have to do something different. You turn the entire machine around and we take this cover off right here. It's just three bolts, not a big deal. So now that we're here, we're at the back end and we're going to get these two bolts out right there. All right, back on this side, we have our little breather tube right here. And I'm not sure if that's plastic or not. It might be metal. You just want to be careful with any plastic nipples that you have, but no, that one's metal. That's cool. And we've got it connected back here to our throttle. And sideways if I can get a good hold on it no need it to stop moving around there we go and we got our carburetor off sweet now, just in case it falls out while you are working on this carburetor, go ahead and take a picture or something so you know where this rod goes back into your throttle rod. So, so after seeing that it was mostly water, I believe, in the gas tank, I'm sort of scared to open up this carburetor because if there is water in it sitting for two years, it's not going to look good. I can already tell, which we probably didn't change the primer ball about whenever uh, we've worked on it because it's dry cracked and that... That doesn't normally happen in a couple of years. That takes a long time. These Tecumseh primer bulbs last for a long time, but we did obviously go through the carburetor because it has a new jet. Um, these carburetors, now some Tecumsehs do have metal jets, but the majority of the ones that we see in the shop have plastic jets that are held in with two O-rings. And let me bring you in and I'll show you what this jet looks like from the inside. So if we look down there, see, I got a blinging brand new red jet in there. So we obviously kitted the carburetor and put a brand new jet with O-rings whenever we worked on it a couple of years ago. Now, the good thing about plastic jets is they don't corrode. They just have O-rings that will eventually get messed up from the gasoline and you'll have to replace those. And if they're old, they'll get brittle and you'll have to replace the whole jet. So I guess let's go ahead and tear it apart. I do have to say... This thing smells very foul, <laughs> so um, that's not ever good. Oh, let's put my glove on just in case there's something in it that gets gross. I know y'all care about my, my hands and skin so much. Oh, that's gross. That's... That's really gross. It is full of something. Hold on. What is this? Oh my God, what is that? That looks like an O-ring. Huh. That's odd. Well. Let's go a little further. Ew. Oh yeah, that's bad. Let me clean this up. So we're definitely going to need to kit this thing. I think I might run it up to the shop and put it in the ultrasonic too. 
Now, we're not going to dig that jet out. What we're going to do, we're going to go in through the inside where I showed you how it looked, you know, brand new on the inside. We're going to go and get a flathead and just pop it through that way. And you can see the O-ring, hopefully you can, completely deteriorated and got squished up in there. And that's what was in our uh, fuel bowl nut. So we're going to have to get the needle seat out and that's pretty easy you can just blow through the fuel inlet and usually that'll come right out if you don't want to go poking at it and yeah we're going to get a primer bulb carburetor kit new jet new o-rings and make this thing great again all right i got my flat head and let's see how easy this is just going to use some leverage oh it popped right out it's going to keep coming out no Push it through this way. There we go. To remove the primer bulb, it's held in there with like a thrust washer that once it is pushed down around the sides, it grabs the walls of this of the carburetor to where it won't let the primer bulb come back out. So you're gonna destroy it pretty much whenever you take it out, but the new primer bulb you get will probably have one with it. So you'll just take your pokey tool till you find a lip hanging up somewhere and pull it on out. Just like that. Actually, that one could probably be used again if you just want to hammer it down just a little bit and, and reuse it. I gotta get all that old primer bulb out. And we're soaking. So I'm back from the shop. I got everything I need for this repair. I did go ahead and just bring home my ultrasonic cleaner because I didn't want to sit around the shop for 20 minutes waiting on it to soak. So I can just take it back to work tomorrow. I did pick up all the pieces I need. I did get a new primer bulb. The part number is a 36045 and I sell them for like $4.99. And also, whenever you do get a Tecumseh primer bulb, you gotta make sure you know which one that you're getting because one has a hole in the end and one has no hole. So this one happened to have no hole in it. So um, both of them are the same price though. I did pick up another brand new red jet, even though mine was probably fine. I just didn't want to mess with it because a whole jet and O-rings, I sell for like $2.95. So I only pay, you know, probably a buck 50 or something like that. And then I got a carburetor kit. Oh, the jet, you're going to want to know which jet you need. You're going to have to actually look up the engine probably because even if you know you have a blue jet, there's two size blue jets. There's a big blue and a little blue. Or if you have a red jet, there might be a big red and a little red, but they also have white jets and uh, yellow jets. So you, <laughs> there's a ton of different plastic jets. You gotta look up your model to know which one that you need. Now the actual carburetor kit, it comes with a bowl gasket, a needle and C, and your bowl nut gasket, and it's a part number 631021, and I sell that for $7.95. So you could probably get it another buck or two cheaper, but that's actual Tecumseh parts. These are not aftermarket. A lot of you have asked me what I use to soak my carburetors in, and this is just a small setup here. I'm gonna have a much larger one when we start doing the car stuff. But um, I use this DK Sonic ultrasonic cleaner and it's super simple guys. I use Dawn dish detergent in it. I mean, it works great. <laughs> it's not any special chemicals or anything like that. You just put a squirt it on in there, some hot water, set it up. Now this is in Celsius degrees. So a lot of these carburetors, they're fine. You can just put it all the way to 80 degrees Celsius, put it on 20 minutes, you're good to go. Now, if you're putting your two cycle carburetor in this thing, you're gonna to wanna to turn this bad boy down to 60 degrees Celsius and you can still leave it at 20 minutes because inside your, where your high and your low needle jets go, there is either O-rings that are connected to the jets and sometimes they come out, but a lot of times they get stuck inside of the carburetor and if it doesn't have those, it has two kind of plastic grommets for them to go through and those sort of keep it in place. So when you do adjust it, it has that tension on it so it doesn't move in and out while it's running from the vibration. But if you put those in here with 80 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes, they're gonna melt and it's gonna be a real fun time getting your high and low jets back in. Ask me how I know. So let's put this thing in the soak and we will come back in about 20 minutes. We've got the carburetor, the bowl, and our bowl nut jet. 
Got it on 80 degrees. And you wait. All right, we are done with the soak. See how she looks. Everything will be hot when you take it out. I am going to rinse this off with water, spray it really good with carburetor cleaner, and uh, might put a brush to this nut because it's still a little gooky. The bowl cleaned out beautifully. Carburetor is looking great. So the carburetor came out pretty clean, but this jet bowl nut at the bottom is not very clean yet. It's got gookie straight down in the center of it, so yes, don't judge. These are my wire welding tip cleaners, but I don't have any guitar strings right now. It's normally what I use. All right, give it a good spray. Okay, that's all better. First thing I'm gonna do is put my primer ball back in. It does have them curved upwards. That's the way you're gonna to wanna to push it in. That way it grabs the walls and won't come back out. Push that down good and snug. Push this on in. Now that I have my primer bulb on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my jet back in. And this is where you're gonna want the O-rings. One right here on the end, and there's two channels on here. You really can't miss it, and one right there. And we're gonna go back into the carburetor like this because this is the part that sticks out inside the center of the carburetor. So when you do it though, you wanna make sure that the, this O-ring doesn't catch on anything and get flipped over here. So pay attention to how it feels as you go back in. And, and there is a Tecumseh tool for this, for taking out the uh, needle seat and putting it back in. It's like a little uh, crochet hook looking end and a flat end on the uh, other side, but I don't have one here. And that slides right back into place. You see it sticking up there. I'm gonna make sure it's good and snug. Take a look. Looks good. And go ahead and put our seat back in. Now there is a way to put the seat back in. It only goes in one way. Whenever you look at one, one side has a rib all the way around it. I don't know if you can see that really well. It might be blurry. One side has a rib and the other side is completely flat. The flat side you want to go towards the needle. So we're going to take a stab at letting it fall down in there. Maybe. Well, no, this carburetor is old and a little bit of swollen, so it's not doing that. Get you something flat that's about the right diameter. And you want to get that set in there perfectly flat. Oh, I don't know if I can get you in there to see it or not. But that seat goes pretty far down in there. So once we got that, we can put our needle and float back on. This hangs on that little metal prong. Get it down into the hole there. That looks good. I'm gonna check it. And hopefully it won't leak. Put our new bowl gasket back on. And our bowl. And now whenever we do the bowl, we want to make sure that this part that's lifted is what the side correlating to where the float's going to go up. So. Snug as a bug in a rug. Oop, our gasket. And we're 
we're done, we can put it back together. Got to get our throttle rod back together. This is a fun one. Well, that wasn't too bad. Now we can go ahead and bolt it back on. So I got her all put back together now to see if she runs. I am not putting the air filter assembly back on yet because like I said, it is a Tecumseh and they are known to leak a day two later. So I'm gonna wait and see what happens with this one. But let's give her a go. We're gonna put her on full throttle, prime it a whole bunch. See if she fires up. till for sure so that's the fix guys thanks again for tuning into chicanic if you haven't found us on facebook yet find us at facebook.com slash chicanic find me on instagram at the real chicanic or find me at chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts hoodies and long sleeve shirts thanks guys and have a great day